Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to the Blast Furnace on Mythic Difficulty in the Blackrock Foundry. Yes, and first off, sorry, it's yeah. so late. Yeah, hopefully this will yeah, hopefully this will still help some of you out though. So that's why we're going to be getting this one out for those people who are still struggling on this fight. And this fight is very, very similar to how it was on Heroic. It's very similar to its Heroic counterpart. However, this is way, way more precise. It's a very delicate encounter. If you just go in there, guns blazing you're probably going to fuck it up somehow. You could say this fight is quite a bit of a gear check. Um, so if you don't really have the healers or the DPS requirement, like there's quite a few tight DPS requirements here and there. So if you don't really have the gear for this fight, you are going to struggle. But as long as you do have the gear, it's not really that difficult. Now in terms of compositions, you do want to bring two tanks. You could bring three tanks if you want, but we'd really recommend that you stay away from it. Three tanks just sort of gimps your setup. It will help you for phase one, but for the rest of the phases, it doesn't really help you at all. You want to bring five healers and you want to bring pretty much any DPS at all. It is, however, completely mandatory that you bring at least a single priest as you are forced to mind control in this encounter to actually defeat it. If you can bring two priests, that's ideal. It'll help you out in phase one. Um, but for phase two, you, you need at least one priest in your raid to actually defeat the encounter. Now let's kick straight into it and talk about phase one. Now the objective in this phase remains the exact same. Use the bombs to blow up the heat regulators. However, on Mythic, you need a total of 25 bombs for each heat regulator, which is pretty fucking crazy. Now you need to do this phase as quickly as you possibly can because you want the heat to remain as low as possible because of course you still have the blast to deal with that deals damage to the entire raid and the frequency of these blasts increases with the amount of heat that you have. Now to give you a rough idea, if you can complete this phase with heat below around 30% and everyone alive, you're going to be doing an amazing job. That's what you should be aiming for because that will set you up really nicely for the rest of the encounter. Now in phase one, you'll have to deal with the exact same ads that you had to deal with on Heroic and they all behave the exact same way apart from the bellows operators. They'll still spawn in the exact same locations and they'll run towards the heat regulators and begin to increase their heat. However, at 50% health, they'll stop increasing the heat and they'll immediately switch to your tanks. If you thought these guys hurt on Heroic, they do even more damage on Mythic. So everyone really needs to be aware of the frontal cone shockwave because if you're hit by this as a non-tank, you'll pretty much be one hit and tanks you really want to be using your cooldowns or ask for externals while these mobs are active. You should only ever really see three operators in total. If you're forced to fight a fourth one, then your phase is simply taking too long and the heat will just be so large that later on in the fight it will just wipe you. So the operators, because you want to keep this heat low, you do need to prior them. This is your number one DPS priority. Just kill them off as soon as you possibly can, especially when they're above 50% health and they're increasing the heat. The rest of the mobs in the encounter remain the exact same. Form and Feldspar will still do taking damage to all players within 45 yards, will place Rupture debuffs on people that need to be placed outside the raid, and will also cast Pyros on random people. The security guards will still place shields on the ground, make sure you move any mobs out of them, and engineers will still throw bombs on random players every 6 seconds or so, as well as attempt to repair the heat regulator, make sure of course you're interrupting and stunning this, and they'll also cast Electrocute to random players, and they'll also drop their bomb bags. So what you want to do is split your raid into two groups, one on the left heat regulator and one on the right. Put Foreman Felsbar on either side, you won't be killing him off in this phase, but it is important that he does take damage. So put him with your strongest cleaver and dot damage dealers and just throw him off onto that side. Now, if you have two priests at your disposal, you can mind control the engineers. This won't increase the frequency of the bombs at your disposal. It does, however, make the phase cleaner as you can always decide which player on each side receives the bombs. Warlocks are amazing at this because you have the 30% damage reduction passives, so throwing it on them is always awesome. We highly recommend that you do use this unless your damage or healing is pretty far off. Now on the pool you want to destroy the initial bellows operators and then switch to the security guards. Any engineers active try and keep alive for as long as possible because you want to maximize the amount of bombs that your raid will be getting. However you do not want more than two engineers really up at any one time as you're just going to have so many bombs to deal with all in one time. There'll be people running all over the place that means that people are going to be exploding on each other because it it just happens. It just becomes an absolute mess. Yeah, so if, if anything, your damage goes down as well. Yeah, so. because you're moving around so much. Yeah. So if you can try and limit it to two engineers at either side at any given time, you are going to be a lot happier. Now, once the first bellows operator dies, kill off the lone security guard on both sides. When the second operator spawns, this is when you want to be using Bloodlust. It will actually be up at a later point in the fight for uh, an enrage, um, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. You'll also get a new security guard and an engineer spawn at the exact same time. You just want to nuke this operator below 50% health and then look at killing off the first engineer. 
As a tank, it's incredibly important that you try and make this engineer dying as close to the heat regulator as possible. However, you can't just camp in front of it the entire time because security guard shields would just totally screw it up. You can, however, get help with this. If you run straight past it after a shield has landed, you can just stun the engineer right in front of the heat regulator and just quickly kill it off. But you can also use things like death knight grips just so you can just rip it out of the group of um, mobs and just kill it right in front of the heat regulator. Once a bag is in front of the heat regulator after the engineer has died, you should just have one player solo the entire contents of the bag, all three bombs. You can do this with classes like rogues using faint with elusiveness, you can use bubble, you can use dispersion, you can use evidence, you can use diffuse magic. Pretty much every class can deal with it in one way or another, it's just flat out magic damage. Um, but you do need to be careful, however, if you explode a bomb the exact same time that, say, a blast comes in, you're asking to die. You know, the burst from both abilities can easily just one hit you. Now, when this second bellower is close to death, you'll actually have a third set of engineers and security guards come in. Now, it's kind of awkward for your tank to pick it up at this point, so if you have hunters, try and use MDs just to make it easier for your tanks. Kill off the second bellower and move towards the third bellower. And this guy spawns right at the back on both sides. Now, during the third Bellera, you will get another set of engineers and security guards. You can do two things here. Either you can CC them using like hunter traps and all the other kind of stuff. That all works. And then just pick them up as you go into phase two. Or you can just tank them with everything else. Now, we do highly recommend that you do CC them for your first try. But if your tanks are confident that they can tank everything, don't pussyfoot around it. Just tank absolutely everything. You'll be fine. Maybe you just want to CC them on the side that Foreman Feldspar is just to reduce the amount of damage that tank's taking. It's entirely up to you. Using CC or not, it'll be fine. Now, it is very difficult for your tank to pick them up at this point as he is so far away because he's at right at the back with the fucking bellows operator. So using things like MDs here are amazing because it does help your tank pick all of these ads up. Now make sure that you focus this last bellower down and bring the second engineer that spawned that at this point is very, very low from passive cleave under the heat regulator and just blow him up. Have someone use the bomb bag and explode all of the bombs and then really at this point you should be transitioning into phase two. Note at this point that the tank will have a bucket load of mobs on him so this is a really great time to use most of your big cooldowns. Once you're in phase two, what you want to do is just drag both mobs from both sides Together, chain all your cooldowns as a tank, like Alex just said, and just start blowing them all up. Make sure that you keep away from any engineer bomb bags when they drop, and make sure you don't blow up other raiders with the engineer bombs that have already been thrown out at you. You do, however, need to be very careful and not kill off one of the security guards at this point. This is where your mandatory priest comes in. Now, just like in Heroic, in this phase, you need to kill the four immune primal elementalists in the middle of the room, and the only way to break their immune shield is by killing a slag elemental on top of them. However, in Mythic, the slag elementals have their own immune shield, and the only way to remove this is by mind controlling a security guard and using their slay elemental ability on a slag elemental. Note, you can only use this slay elemental ability once per security guard. Now, you may be thinking that there is four primal elementalists. That would mean you need to mind control four different um, security guards for four different slag elementals. When in fact, you only need to do it for two of them. When a slag elemental dies, it will reanimate off your around four blasts or whenever a fire caller resurrects it. However, after it has been resurrected, if it did have the slay elemental effect on it, that will actually last on it permanently. And the timing in which these blasts come in is actually perfect, which means you only ever need to use two of them. So the moment that first slag elemental spawns, place a raid icon on it, get a priest and mind control security guard and use slay elemental on it. Once that has been done, make sure you release the security guard as close to the tanks as possible, as it will be enraged and immune to taunt. Now when the second slag elemental spawns, place a second raid icon on it, Get your priest of mind control another different security guard and use slay elemental for a final time while this phase is going on you still have security guards spawn so don't worry too hard if you mess it up however it isn't really great if you do you are still fighting against the heat which is slowly going up in this phase all by itself now each primal elementalist is required to normally be broken twice in mythic as they do have a crazy amount of health if you really wanted to, you might be able to make some giant cooldown dump on one of them, but it's totally unnecessary. Just go through the phase as normal, and you just need to break each one twice to kill it. Just a note about the slag elementals. In Mythic, their burn ability actually does splash damage around their target. So if you are fixated by a slag elemental that's not being used to break one of the primal elementalists, just make sure that you interrupt it as much as you possibly can just to reduce the amount of damage that you're taking, but also make sure that you're spread five to ten yards away from any other players this also applies to melee so just make sure that you're not stacked now in this phase you'll still have to deal with feldspar and really you want to kind of ignore this guy 
and just cleave off the primal elementalists when their shields are down onto him. You should really look at having him dead before or on the second elementalist. They still have fire callers in this phase and their cauterized wounds ability needs to be interrupted. We generally assign two people per fire caller just to make sure it 100% got interrupted and you have so many interrupts around, you'll be absolutely fine. And it is also very important that you do dispel the primal elementalists because of their own little earth shield thing. Make sure you just have pretty much have everyone fucking dispel it because if that goes off, it's the most infuriating thing to wipe to because it just heals so much. Now the debuffs place some random targets that explode at the end of their duration, which is called Volatile Fire, needs to be tracked by the entire raid. If they explode at the exact same time as a blast hits your raid, people can so easily be comboed, especially if you do not move away from other players properly. Note it is also possible to have a Volatile Fire on the exact same target, so you can have multiple ones at the exact same time. If this does happen, this person is pretty much forced to use a CD or an external, otherwise they'll probably end up just being finished off with a blast at the end. So just use a CD if you have a shit ton of Volatile Fires on you and you should be absolutely fine. You can be carried by Disc Priest here because good shield timing will just make the whole thing a joke. And generally on a Volatile Fire and Blast overlap, you should be using your raid cooldown such as AM or um, Rally or anything like that, and you should be fine. Now, for your tanks in this phase, you want one of your tanks to be responsible for the positioning of fire callers. Try and make sure that they're always underneath the elementalists so you can nuke off the elementalists onto the fire callers just to cleave them down. And you want to be killing them off in the downtime between the shield. And you want to have your other tank to deal with the security guards out of the raid just so it prevents any of the defense shields landing in horrible places. So for this phase, just move from elementalist to elementalist, killing them off one by one. And note that the longer this phase goes on, the more slag elementals you'll have up and the more frequent the blast will start coming in, which means towards the end of the phase, you will be taking quite a large amount of damage, which means you do need to chain your healing cooldowns accordingly. Um, it's very hard to assign sort of like before the pull. You really just need to do it mid-encounter. Just have one person responsible for calling out which CDs are being used at which time. You don't want to overlap them because you really need to make the most out of them. Now, once the final elementalist dies, you will go into the last phase. Now, before switching to the boss, just make sure you do finish off any of the fire callers or security guards that are still left alive. Boss heat in this phase will no longer go up, so the boss will remain at the same heat as he ended phase two on. If this is below 100%, this phase will be possible, and the lower it is, the easier life your healers will have. However, that said, after you've been in the encounter for 10 minutes, the boss will immediately go to 100 heat, regardless of how much heat he has beforehand, and on your first kill, you're very, very likely to see this. So at 100% heat, the boss will be doing a blast every 4 seconds or so, and you'll struggle to outheal it for a long period of time. However, as the boss goes to this 100% energy phase, Bloodlust should just be coming up, and you should just be able to use Bloodlust to outheal it and just finish off the boss. So to wrap up this last phase and to conclude the guide, all you need to do in this phase is just treat it like you did in Heroic. Make sure that you put the melts as far away from the boss as possible. And the only real difference, I guess, is that if you do have a Slag Elemental fixating on you, instead of just stacking in melee, which is what you probably did in Heroic, make sure that you're not stacked on anyone. Just be as far away from the, the rest of the raid as possible, just so you're not cleaving off on them, because this combo with Blast can be really, really dangerous. Chain healing cooldowns as they come up, and really, you just got to kill the boss before he kills you. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's not a bad fight. It's quite, as I said, quite a delicate fight, and there's a lot of little bits and pieces that you need to know, and you will be progressing it phase by phase, so don't get too angry if... Uh you're stuck in phase one for a little bit. And phase one is probably the hardest phase. Yeah, 100% phase one's hardest phase. To execute it completely, phase. you know, perfect and having heat below 30, you know, it takes a while to get there. But once you've done that point, it only gets easier. Yeah, exactly. Either way, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you, you did enjoy the guide, even though it was a little bit late. But hopefully you can forgive us for that. It will be a lot quicker next time probably so yeah thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy this guide then make sure you do give us a thumbs up it helps us out a lot and if you want to see any of our other mythic blackrock foundry guides then make sure you do click up on the annotations on your screen now and it will take you straight to those videos thanks for watching thank you